Lord, that's our confession that you are too good. You are too good. We thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. We appreciate you. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you for what you are set to do for us and with us this morning. Let the heaven over our lives open and let your glory be seen in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, before you sit, turn to one or two persons and say, this will be your best year. If the person doesn't believe you, go to the person who believes. enough to say this is my best year I know you are asking pastor you don't know what I've gone through this year but sit down you are going to pray for yourself eventually please can you project for us Habakkuk chapter 5 chapter 1 verse 5 sorry I've said some things about this year, that this year belongs to them who love the Lord. And this year, the Lord will do it. You are going to be the planting of the Lord. The third one I'm afraid to say, but God will help us. I will eventually say in the name of Jesus. Can you give me a new international version? It says, look at the nations and do what? And be utterly what? Amazed. Why? The Lord is said to do something with your life. Amen? Amen? He said that even you will be amazed at what God is going to do with you. Hallelujah. So get ready for what God is said to do with your life. And that's why we are, this weekend we are having the kingdom night or whatever the media team have called it. The Lord told us that he told us this year we are the planting of the Lord and I told you to put out to draw your trees. And so on Friday you are going to drop your, your trees at the feet of the Lord. You will label it, make sure it's a book or it's an envelope you are putting that you can pick it up the following day. We are going to leave it on the altar overnight. I will explain further on Friday for the sake of time. If that notebook or that prayer request, what you want to see as the fruit of your life. The Lord has said you will do marvelous things that you yourself will be what? Amazed. Get ready. Amen? So, we are continuing with uh, the very love and very... We are going to break into segment because it's going to be interactive. Uh... Where's Kola or Felicia? Somebody should pick microphone because we are going to interact like a Bible study. Can you project the, today's sermon topic? Can you read with me? That is general. Can you, can you ask that question for yourself now? Okay. Why are you a group one? One, two, three, you are group two. Everybody up there is what? You are group what? Please, you see, I'm born again. If choir is one, and this group is two, what will be your group? God bless you. Don't do like you didn't go to school. This group will be what? Group what? Back there, Group six, okay. This is group what? Okay. Group what? Eight. Back there? Okay. 
This is the largest group like the other side. You are group what? And children's session, so there's no Judas. Okay. So you are one person who will speak. The question is, have anything happened to you that you feel like asking God, if God will truly love me, this thing we've been preaching is Jeremiah 31 3 says, With an everlasting love, He has loved me. Why, why am I passing through this? Why am I? What is it? If you've ever asked that question, or you, you want to know what, what you have passed through, it could be, let me tell you, it could be the loss of a loved one, maybe rape. For a student, it could be carried over. Or what is making you ask? Don't talk about uh, the cash crunch. I'm not a politician. Yeah. Don't, please don't go to... We want to look at ourselves. Have you ever suffered anything that caused you pain in the heart? Somebody could have betrayed you. So anybody in group one? Group two? Please, God bless you for starting it. The Lord will start his miracle with you in Jesus' name. Okay, so um, my auntie was sick a while back, like last month in February, and I prayed. Sister, you know I'm a bush man. The slang is not flowing with me. Can you just speak out? Okay. okay. Go ahead. You said your auntie was okay. sick. Yes, she was sick. And I prayed, and I also told people in church to pray for me. But eventually, we lost her. Okay. Good. That's the loss of a loved one. And it pained you. Yes, sir. God disappointed you. No, no, no let's, it's our father. We are, not, we are not going to play church. You felt disappointed. Yes, sir. You I felt think, betrayed. Sir. Yes, sir. God, for your hand. Good. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. No, is, is that not? <laughs> God, for my hand. So, go ahead. This group what? Group two. Group three, anybody? Wonderful people. There's somebody there. So that, could, that cost you pain and trauma. I agree. Uh, I think mine is similar to hers. Um, it's the year we lost our mom. Um, uh, everybody, every, bro, every boy's weakness is yeah. their mother. So we know yeah. that one. But so, okay, go ahead. And it looked like she was recovering. And one night, God just said he's taking her. And the next morning, I was told she had really gone. So it was so disheartening. You were disappointed. Yes. It left pain with you. Yeah. It looks like the war has have come to an end. Yeah. God has abandoned you. You have been forsaken. I agree. Okay. Group four. Group four. Where's group five? This group five, anybody here? Nothing? No business failure? Okay, please come. If you are ready, I can do a carryover for you. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, start with... Uh... Praise God. Hallelujah. When there was conflict between me and my husband, when he was <laughs> alive, so it was so terrible that I asked God, why me? It was like you were in, a, in hell. Uh, yeah. It was, you felt like yes. the war had collapsed. Yes. That's family from yes. your husband. Yes. Okay. So thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Amen. There's Mike Davis there. Give him so that he will... Praise God. Hallelujah. Ah... Uh... In fact, when I, when I was growing up, I've never one day suffered even headache, fever. I don't used to know sickness, but all of a sudden, I started seeing myself, you know, even going to surgery. The worst is, I don't, I, I, I used to raise my hand while praising God. Then I started asking God, what is happening? So you don't want me to praise you again, or you don't want me to study the scriptures. But God has been faithful. Okay, you ask him questions. 
Anybody here? I'm coming to you, please. Ah, there are two persons here. You take second chance. I will come back. There's something I've been asking God for for a very long time. And every time they say three things, I would make it one, two, three. And um, although I don't have the courage to ask God, um, I don't know whether you still love me or things like that. But sometimes I'm just like, God, ah, why Hope the fad makes your heart sick. Uh, your heart has become sick. I just don't have the courage. When they read say, the prayer point, you say, go sing kakambe. Okay. No, okay, you want to finish with choir? Okay. Okay, I've been asking God for financial upliftment. Coming from a very humble family, I felt I was going to boom, you no know, help others. You're going others. to be the God in the home. <laughs> so I've been asking God for this right from when I was a kid. And up to now, it looks as if he has given me every other thing apart from that. Hmm? There is one particular thing I want to do with a particular amount of money, and it's been so difficult to get it. Hmm. So I keep asking Just God. that one thing. Yes. Okay. Money. <laughs> Give him. We are coming. Praise Now you have started. I'm not. Anybody from this side, if I come back to you, you give me money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I remember that very early in life, I used to pray to make it very early in life. In fact. To make it. Yeah, yes, sir. I'll make break what? it down. Be, be, In fact, be, be, I remember be, as young as eight, nine, our parents would tell us to write our prayer points and go and submit it to church. And I remember my prayer is that God should give, make me a millionaire very early in life. And I wasn't just praying about it. I set an age for it, sometimes in my 20s. And I walked towards it. I read the first course. By the grace of God, I graduated as second best. But it seemed everything just scattered. I walked for a while. I still had to go back to school again. So the thing didn't seem to be clear somehow. <laughs> so I was like, if I pray and I walk, at least the results should show. At that point. So. <laughs> Please, hold on. I'm coming back. Go to number. You can even start now. See, you are taking time. Oh. Don't say, Pastor, don't look at your watch. If you, are, if you look at your watch today, we are here together. Morning. Good, good morning, church. Good morning, sir. Uh, when I look That's back... That's Chief Aloran Femi. Okay. Yeah. When I look back into my life... Thank you, sir, for looking back and telling us. I always uh, try to remind myself why is it that really I have fear? You have fear? Fear, yes. Okay. And yet, nothing bad has ever happened to me. But yet you have fear? Yet. Good. But it was only when I came to understand, really, that fear is of the devil. Okay. And that really, anytime I do anything now, the first thing I do is just to praise God. And to bless God. Because he's faithful always. And that is why really, uh, for anybody who has fear, let me just tell you that really fear is of the devil. Okay. And that really, the moment you begin to just praise God, then you will see that really our God is very faithful. And many of those things that you fear, they will, none of them will ever happen to you. Amen. And that is really my experience. Thank Praise you the much. Lord. So let's go to the other side. I'm still coming back to you. Please, I've not forgotten you. I just want to give everybody an opportunity so that we can run with time. Uh, Chief has begun to answer some of our questions. So, this place, nobody. Thank you. Eh? You didn't raise hand. They're the ones looking. They're my, boy. They are the, they are my bosses. So they, it's when you raise hand, they will come. Okay. Somebody, I didn't see anybody here. Please just raise your hand. The, the young man will locate you. The loss of my sister two years ago was so terrible on me that in fact it's the grace of God that I survived. It's like part of you left you. The part of me left me actually. 
Mm -hmm. Part of me left me. It was the grace. And where you still remember it now? Maybe it's... because we were the only two left. And I'm not the only one left now. God is with me. Amen. Okay, somebody behind. No, just start this side. I'm just concentrating here. Mr. Alabit is well with you. Well, when we find ourselves in such things that we still remember, we need to start a conversation. That's the essence of this program. We need to start what? A conversation. We need to start a conversation. Okay. Well, I've been asking God to guide me for a long time now, and, and I'm not trying to be unfair to God, but... I mean, I'm, I'm just confused because, like, I ask him for direction. I feel like I get direction. I start doing something, and next thing, it blows up in my face, and everything's just confusing me. It's, it's like, I don't understand what God is doing, and I'm mm -hmm. asking him to explain to me. But... I don't understand, but God will help us. Amen. You are welcome to the club. Okay. Um... <laughs> it's, 20, it's 20 years um, last February 1st um, my wife and I have been married and trusting God uh, for children um, I mean it's in no way diminished my love for him and commitment to serve him uh, and Okay, Most I... times there is encouragement from his word, you know. Uh, but I still find myself occasionally Ask asking the Lord, when? But why? When? Why? When? You know, why the delay? I, I got answer. Your children are going to be a children of purpose and of timing, specific timing. But when? <laughs> you know, and when and when and when just keeps. I don't endless. know. Yeah, I don't know. They are coming back. Okay, Prof, I'm coming to you. Just let her finish. Praise the Lord. He says she's, he's been waiting on the Lord. Okay. And he said, um, Pastor, he's ministering everywhere. I asked God, I asked God question on December 26, 2015, when my daddy died. I was like eight years old. So, and we are six. And my mom, is, my mom don't have anything doing. So, we all depend on my daddy. So, I was like, God, because that December he died, he bought like 26 bags of rice and shared for the widows in church. And he shared the rice was, then 26 he died. I was like, God, as little as I was like, God, why would this thing happen? Why would my daddy left us at this tender age? Okay. Why? After all he has done, all his good work, God, he still died. And it's still painful. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Good morning, church. The question is very simple. Why do we suffer? We no, su no, sir. That's not the question. Sorry, but please. Why the, do mm, mm, mm. the question is, give us an example. Not, okay. you, are, you are not expected to ask the question. You okay. don't know where the question is going. Okay. The question is, tell us why. I mean, if you have, you see, nobody has, they told us their personal experience. Tell us your personal experience. Okay, I don't have any personal experience. Okay, because next person. God has continued to support me. Amen. I am not suffering in any way. Amen. I've never suffered in any way. No trouble. So what I'm saying... Yes. Not for him. Can somebody I've never suffered in any way? Amen. But Joseph, no, sir. You are not the you are not the preacher. You are not the preacher. You are you don't know where we are going to. Have you ever been sick? Have you ever been sick? Have you ever been to the hospital? Yes. To do what? Check. Have you been through surgery? Yes, I've been to surgery. Is that to check? Yes. It's to check. Surgery yes. is to check. Yes. Beloved, can we see ourselves? You say you've never been sick, but you have gone for surgery. They cut you open. Or they didn't they cut you open? To check what? 
Do they take care of people who are well? Uh, please, uh, uh, Prof, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. This are, we have school children here who are watching us. Mr. Bajan. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a twin. <clears throat> and um, growing up, I had a very beautiful relationship with my twin sister. We were <clears throat> very Sorry. close. But along the line, you know, we've shared in this assembly about sibling rivalry. But I don't know at what point it escalated. And we are currently exchanged. And I keep asking God, why? Is there something I did personally? Or I, I, I knew she had challenges. But at the same time, I've been asking God, to send harvesters to our soul. But at the same time, I keep asking God, why should this happen? Okay. Any other person here? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My son, uh, what would I say now? It's not I have prayed over an issue and uh, spared the result. But to my mind, it's like God has not answered it satisfactorily. I agree. And I continue to pray. Who is the next person here? I am. I am. I have collected. Oh, sorry. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Reverend for this opportunity. Ah. Even to let's me just to push, see. push, push, push. I came from a polygamous home. My father, in the olden days, when they are rich, they would say, I want to marry two wives. My mother was the first wife. Then when he married the second wife, the second wife was just a bully, like a warrior. So that time... He when married only two. Eh? Just only two. My mom, yes. Only married, two. Yes, two he wives. didn't come near my grandfather now, so go ahead. So my, my mother is the first wife. She wants to drive, drive her and the children away. So even my first uh, eldest brother didn't even live in the compound, in the house with him, with us. So we went, before we knew it, war every day, fight every day with my father. When my grandmother came one day, saw them fighting, that one ran home. And before we knew it, she died. Before we know it, my father died. It was because of the woman. Praise the then Lord. we started suffering. Uh, my elder, he had us three uh, female and three male. So we started battling with our mother before the senior ones were able to bring us up. But Just hold on. all along, we will continue with the conversation. All along, he had another. My brother that trained me had a wife. Before we know it, that one married a second wife. I say, well, everybody was angry. Why did you marry a second wife? I was with them, helping, the, helping him to bring up his children. When I was in school, he was able to put me in a, a secondary Madam, school. Madam. You've not Before told we us know anything. it, Madam, the woman Madam, was all the time fighting. You the have second not wife. told us anything. Tell us what is the suffering. That I'm alive. Because the second wife wanted, we live in story building. <laughs> she wanted to, I don't know what happened, and she was beating me. She wanted to, she, she confessed to my brother that she would have thrown me down from upstairs. Madam, and I thank Madam. God. Praise the Lord. This one is traumatic to me. I'm coming. I'm coming on this side. Please, let's just hit it on the... Praise God. I have asked this question. God, why? Why do I suffer? If every day... I praise you. I worship you. In terms of my husband's health, the door, thank God for today, he's alive. But he has been one of us in this chapel. 
I've been praying that God will perfect his healing. Amen. Another why, even up to now, is the loss of my daughter. At the point of death, I was with her in the hospital. I prayed. Pastors prayed. Christians prayed. Thinking that, yes, he will come out life. But at the end, two weeks, he gave up. Up to today, even now, I'm asking God, why? why? I'm not going to use scriptures to cover anything. Is your father asking? Okay. I grew up as uh, the last child of my family. And we know how last children are exposed to love. But growing up to become... You say exposed to love or that's sport. <laughs> okay. I had the privilege of being loved by my parents and my elder siblings because my siblings... No, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just asking My siblings are question. far ahead of me. Like my eldest brother is 20 years apart from me. So they all took me like their own child. So I thought life was meant to be balanced like that. By growing up to become a woman, I saw life from another angle. You know, so... And... Being trained in the church, to grow in the church, serving God. At a point, I was asking, is it that as Christians, we are meant to suffer because we are meant to grow as children of God? We'll just take these things and not resist them. So I look at other people and say, why are they experiencing love? Because honestly, I would say as a grown-up, God permit me if I'm wrong, I've never been loved. But I've had to struggle and say, okay, one day there will be a breakthrough. We are still serving God, and I keep asking myself, is this how one will continue? And I look at my age now, yet no breakthrough. You know, other women are making it. Why have I not made it, God? I'm so talented. Why have I not made it? Why have I not been able to break even? So those questions, sometimes, even until recently, sometimes I really break down. I cry, and I see as if maybe... Some people say they don't have children. I have children. Sometimes I hear voices say, I see my children are my burden. You know, so I'm asking God, yet I love you. Yet I'm serving you. I don't have an option to you. But why am I still having to suffer all these things? For how long will I have to suffer them? <clears throat> Prof, please don't give me a professorial lecture. Um, I lost my mom when I was 15 years old, and it was really very devastating. And I quarreled with God, really quarreled with him, and uh, those were the worst years of my life. And then when I finally got married, uh, we had a daughter within the first year, and there was, because of some complication with the pregnancy, she lived one day and was gone. So this time, I did not quarrel with God. Uh, I just surrendered. But the, so six years later, the Lord gave us our son, and then two years later, another son. But in those six years, the question we were asking was not why, but when. When, Lord? When, Lord? And subsequently, but that experience, when we now have other challenges, we just ask, when? When? And I am encouraged because when I look at the life of David, all that he went through before he became king, I'm sure he would have been asking, when, Lord? When, Lord? Leave that for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Please just raise your hands here. I'm going to take so, probably only one person here. Any other person? So there's this interior design project I take on, and I started quite all right. Then after doing the first part, most of the clients give it to people that they are quote-unquote familiar with to finish up. And it's not like I'm not good. I am not to be proud or to cut my... I am very, very good at it. 
But most times I pray, I fast, I even go ahead to sow seeds. I go to the altar, I pray at the beginning of each project. But whenever this thing happens, I ask God, why? It's not as if I'm not good. I mean, I'm Ada Zion. I am very, very good at this thing. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. The pastor will eat your money My on top of it. In case he's not soap. asking God whether he loves me. Why I know he loves me. Reason. But I noticed that sometimes you help people. It's like you're almost laying down your life for people. And at the end of the day, the way they will stab you, the, the sword will go from the back, come out from the front. Hmm. You know, literally. I mean, I experienced it and I'm like, God, have I not tried? So why do you allow this? Thank you. That's betrayal. Can I, just one person here. Or two of you decide who I will call. The question I want to ask God, and I've been asking him. You want is, to ask God or you've been asking I will, I'm, I've been asking and okay. I have been praying over it. Know that it's not the pastor you're asking, or it's God. Okay, go ahead. He created me as a girl. I grew up and I got married. After having children, my husband died. And I've been asking, how will I cope? How will I cope? I'm confused. The Lord has had that question and will answer. Okay, two of you, quickly, please. And I have just one sister at that end, and we just say, uh... Good morning, church. The first time I asked myself that, do God love me, was the year I was denied admission. As a visually impaired person who finished secondary school lately, I sat for jam, I did everything, but just an error. I was denied admission. And my parents were worried that do you want to be sitting at home, we should be feeding you. And this thing became a problem for me. But that faithful Sunday, my parents just walked to the pastor. Please talk to this child. Does he want to stay home? He doesn't want to, want to go to school. Does he want us to be feeding him? And the pastor called me after the service. And when I got home, I was just crying. I was sweeping on the rug, and I start asking, God, do you exist? Do you truly love me? But God later did it. Okay. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I asked myself this question, if indeed God truly loves me, we're on two occasions. The very first one was when my father passed three years back. The reason was that his dream was to ensure is is for him to see me become something in life, but when he passed, I knew that, of course, things have really happened. But I later came to understand that his death was to go open doors for me, and the second one was when I was having rough days in this school. But I thank God that at the end of everything, God showed me a great light. Praise God. Hallelujah. Rookie, please go to the sister. They just raise your hand so that we will look at what we have today. The Lord has to help us. Amen? You will notice across the border our threshold of withstanding pain and trauma differs. Somebody can raise his hands and so what? And so what? But let's go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so there was a time I was working on getting closer to God, like working on my personal relationship with Him. In the span of one month, I entered one chance. As I was crossing the road, Okada hit me. He stole my phone twice. <laughs> I was in the toilet one day and I was just crying and asking God, why is all this happening to me? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want to start by thanking God for all we have done. From what I see, we need to start a conversation. And I'm going to ask them to eventually do something for us, those who want to continue this conversation. Because you agree with me, we can't finish this thing right now. But I want to run through some things for you so that you will understand. The first thing, is it right to ask God questions? The answer is what? Yes. Why? He is your father. i give you an example. If you look at Judges chapter 6 from 11 to 14, a young man by the name Gideon was threshing corn. And what happened? 
the angel came to him and said, Thou mighty man of valor. I'm sure he would have looked like this and said, Who is he talking about? He now asked himself, Our father told us that when we pray, God answers. He has done miracles. If truly he does miracles, why are we here? Why are we in this circumstance? It is, it is needful because of your relationship to ask God questions. You can't hear. Okay, I'll wait a little while. What manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, what manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He made the lame to walk. Hallelujah. He made the blind to see. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, what manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. You just had a free LP that I've waxed. Amen. Another person is uh, Elijah. That's you, because I'm going to, I won't be reading because of time, just right away. In 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 to 8, he has finished killing the prophet of Baal, only one man. He has done great exploits. And Jezebel decided to send WhatsApp to him. Well, he sent a message to him and said, I'm after your head. You know what he said? He said to God, enough is enough. Kill me today. That's what he told God. Be, why, what, after all I have done for you, why am I going this way? Another person, and I want us to read because it's the story of a man, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. His name is John the Baptist. This was a man, when he was baptizing, Jesus was passing. He said, behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. He says, I would not have known him except he who sent me to baptize and revealed it to me and say, upon whom that uh, the dove would descend. It is him, Jesus. We are cousins. We grew up together. My mother told me that when she was pregnant for me, the day his mother came, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If there's anybody who should know him, I am the one. Not only, he said, I will, I, will increase, I, I will decrease, he will increase. But look at what happened. Luke chapter 7. From verse 18 to 28. Let's read it quickly. And the disciples of John went and told him all these things that Jesus did. Because he had just read the widow's, widow's song. He has done great miracles. And so they went to him and said, Oh boy, did you say Jesus is your brother? I mean your cousin. He said, Yes. You are sure. And you are in prison. You are suffering and your husband is giving people money outside. He's a very kind man. Are you sure it's your brother? Tell us the truth. It's your cousin. The, the story you told me, is it true? He will say yes. <laughs> when they finish telling him, you know, <laughs> and John calling unto two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are thou he that shall come, or shall we look for another? <laughs> Crossroad. The pain brought confusion to him. So what you've gone through or what people are going through is not new. That's why I say asking questions is not unscriptural. 
But I can tell you that God does not answer most of them because either he has told you what to do or he knows. Do teachers give, answer you when you are in exam halls? Hold on, leave that. Should we look for another? Are you sure this God we are calling, are you sure the name of Jesus is working? I have prayed, I have fasted, I have jumped, I have been to several mountains. I have seen Oli's. I have seen many of them. Nothing is working. Look at what it says. Away the men came unto him. <laughs> Jesus. This is Jesus. I don't, there's somehow he does his things. I don't, I don't know. He said, they said, John the Baptist has sent to us, your brother, your cousin. Are that he that should come or shall we look for another? I will have expected that he will say, no, tell him I'm the one. In the name of Jesus, let the prison door open. He didn't. The same story they told him. Look at. Go ahead. And in that same hour, he began to display, cured many of the infirmities and plagues, an evil spirit. And unto the many who were blind, he gave sight. Lord, I don't understand. But go ahead. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way. Tell John the Baptist what things you have done, what seen and how. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached. Excuse me, how does that solve my problem? Pastor, I've come to you say, Go and pray more. Go and is the Bible you are opening for me? Will the Bible answer me? No. Go ahead. But this is the key. This is what? The key. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be what? Offended. Excuse me. I will say it's only man who have not seen trouble that beat his chest and say it's what? A man. If you've not seen, it will come. It's not a cause. In the seasons of life, it will come. But he said, blessed is he, whosoever shall not be what? Offended in me. Why? Because understood that offense is the target of why you suffer. Or why we have delays. I want you to understand something. Let's look at the source where the suffering is coming from. Because if you don't know where the su suffering is coming from, like as I said, you won't be able to resist. You won't have the strength to stand through. But the enemy wants you to doubt the love of God. That's what he did at Eden. Did God really love you to say not to eat? And so you need to understand it. That's why we need the conversation to be able to deal with the, with the offenses that come and the questions. If you remember Job, Job chapter, Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 22, don't go there. Job suffered. Who was the source of his suffering? Eh? Who was responsible? Did he see Satan? Was he there when Satan was, uh, was planning it? Was he aware? He wasn't aware. But who was behind it? But he did something. The Bible says in Job 1, 22. Job 1, 22. In all this, Job did what? Not did what? That is the plan of Satan. Because you don't know what has transpired in the spirit. That the devil is jealous of you. The devil is angry that God had loved you beyond measure. So he wants to come against you because of God who is your father. That's the reason. It's not because of what you have done. Sometimes it's because uh, which day was that? Before the, that's the Thursday before the election. We buried a sister here who because he didn't have, she didn't have a child went for surgery. 
and died on the theater table and the man is still living. Sometimes the waiting you wait like, sir, is because when Satan takes special interest in you, that's why some of us go through what we go through. You must, like Prof said, you begin to ask, not, not uh, will you or will you not. He said, don't deal, the promise of God will not fail. But when, God, when Satan takes special interest in you, you are in trouble. You need to understand that. That was what happened. And so the Lord, and the society does not help issue as well. Because God didn't ask you to look at the society. It is out of jealousy of Satan that so many things happen. And because we don't know it is, our sister was accusing the stepmothers. No. Satan has orchestrated it. And if you want an evidence, Satan will pile it up for you to tell you why you are hated, why bad things are happening to you. And if you don't know the scriptures, you are going to buy it. Just know that behind everything that is evil, there is one person you have an adversary. Job. Well, look, if you read that narrative, you see that he was jealous that Job was protected. He said, God, is it not because you blessed him? Is it not because things are working well for him? Is it not this? Is it not this? Is it not that? Is that not jealousy? You don't know the value of being called a child of God. Bible says, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? You see, what God, you see, there are certain things we must not do. We must not let our God lose. So the person behind your challenge is Satan. In fact, oh, there was a time the church was going through some difficult times. And was praying, and the Lord said, go and meet this person. So I met the person, I won't tell the story fully. I said, why are you antagonistic to the church? I said, Pastor, it's not me. But hold on, I will show you who is behind your problem. He put on his phone. Dialed the person, the person picked and said, hello, hello. He said, yes, this is... Professor Susan, so the thing you said about the church, the man didn't know he was on speaker. He let loose. And after it, all, the, the man just said, Okay, Pastor, I've just shown you who is behind your trouble. Sometimes you fight the wrong person. God forbid that when we get to eternity, you are fighting the wrong person. That's why I told her, I said, When she said, Her father married. Uh, Two, my grandfather married a minimum of uh, nine. He went as far as taking another man's wife, who is a king. So, what is uh, Sorry, let's leave it. That's not what, <laughs> for today. <laughs> so, look at one scripture I want to show you. Revelation 12, 12. Why, you are, why there is intense warfare. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of what? And of what? Why? Having what? Great rods. He's angry at you as a believer. Sister, did you know why the day when you are trying to draw close to God, you see what somebody got mad at you? That should have been a signpost. We'll be explaining that on Friday. He should have told you, yeah, God I'm interested. But what he did for you is that you will begin to withdraw and say, are you sure this thing is working? Thank you. I know you won't withdraw. God bless you. But that, that should be a sign for you. Somebody is mad somewhere. That's why every time the church made progress and the Lord is giving us, they, they, want, to, they want to tear the church apart. But I tell you one thing, the Lord had made a promise to us. I will build my church. Hallelujah. Look at it. Um, 1 Peter 5, 8 to 11. Say, be sober, be vigilant, because what? Your adversary, who is he? The devil. You have an enemy called Satan. He's not that powerful. He, he, he has only wives. But I want you to know that whatever you are going through, the, the masquerade behind it is who? So don't call God 
Things you know, look at what he says. He says, he ran like a lion, walking about whom he may devour. Whom did this, what is our... He said, resist him in what? In faith. Resist him in faith. But because we, we don't understand, most people have taken offense. Look at what Job's wife told him when he looked at him. Job 2 verse 9 and 10. Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. His wife said to him, Can't you see your mate? Everybody is making it in life. Are you the only one? You are not even man enough. Look at it. Your mates. And you are here. It's only this house you have not mouth to be making. Look at that brother in church. He has a good car. Didn't you see what his wife wore today in church? <clears throat> Does thou still maintain your integrity in, the, in your office? They say people are making it. You come back, only you the same cloth you are wearing. Are you the only one in that place? Are you the only born again? Are you the only one? It's not them. It is the enemy speaking in your ears. Because you will position people if you want to see who hates you, he will give you 20 people that hate you. Didn't you see how you greeted Mr. Nazodo this morning? He didn't ask, he didn't uh, mind you because she's wearing a beautiful hat. That's why she didn't answer you. Didn't you see this person, how they greeted you? It's because her husband has money. Everything they want to do is. You will see. Because when you seek, you will do what? When you seek, you will do what? You don't want to answer again. <laughs> Church, help me. He said, do thou still maintain thy integrity? Curse God and do what? Die like a man. <laughs> Didn't the Bible say every man should love his uh, wife as a church, as, a, as Christ loved the church? Die. Curse God and do what? Die. Look at what God said, what Job said. But he said unto her, you are speaking as one of these what? Foolish women. The Bible says, when you compare yourself with one another, you are foolish and not wise. You see, there's something you need to understand. Women Fellowship told us uh, in their drama that whether you marry a poor man or you marry a rich man, what they fail to understand is that Proverbs 22 verse 2 says something. It, well, it said in this, Job didn't sing with his lips. A good name is 2 verse 2, 22 2, sir. Verse 2. It says, rich and Paul meet together. What happened? The Lord is the same love that he has for everyone. The Lord does not love me more than you because I'm a pastor. No. It's the same what? The same love. Whether you are poor or whether you are what? You are rich. It's the same love. So I want you to understand a few things. Ah, time is gone. Okay. Let me just say one or two things. What happens to you when you are going through this period or why it lasted? I want you to know and understand according to Psalm 23 verse 4 and 5. What will happen is this. He said, do I walk through the valley of... You are walking through. It's a walking what? It's a walking through. That's not your bus stop. Because whatever happens to you, the Lord can take it and work out something good for it. If you will allow him. He will work out something good for it. The Bible says, if you look at it again, in verse 5, say, it says, when you are passing, it's not the, it's, it will not last forever. It has an expiry date. That's why Romans 8, from verse, let's say from verse 35, let's look at it so that time. Say, so what who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall what help me or what or what or what or what or what or what? He said, What? Let's read the read on. He said, For your sake, we are killed all day, we are counted as sheep. Verse 37. Help me shout in first word. Hey. No. 
in all these things that we are going through, the end result is that we are what? We are coming out overcomers. We are coming out what? Overcomer. Job said, though he slay me, I will trust him. After he is done with me, I will come out as pure as gold. Sometimes the things we are passing through is a dealing and a result of answers to prayers you have prayed. Somebody is praying, Lord, use me mightily. And the Lord said, I can't use you if you are not tested. And he allows you to pass through some fire. No money in your pocket. <laughs> you, you pray and things happen for us. And it gets to your tongue like the young man said, nothing has happened. Shall we go on or shall we not go on? No. You will come out what? More than a conqueror. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I think we will continue this. Uh, hmm. If you remember what Joseph brother, he told his brother, he said, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for what? Good. If you allow yourself to pass through, say if you pass through water, he's there with you. He will not forsake you. Uh, please, what's the time? Okay. The only thing I want you to understand is that your, the love of God for you is undiluted. Please, can you help us project a phone line that we can continue the conversation with? If you want to be part of the phone lines, please just send us your phone and email. Uh, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will begin it. It's not everybody who will be able to. Even if it means we need to start a group to look at it deeply. Because people are hurting. But we need to walk out of it. That the Lord will heal our wounded heart in the name of Jesus. Which one is this one? No. <laughs> this voice, if we won't kill somebody. 0911. Eh? Triple CCOL. Hmm. That's Chapel of Christ, our light. Please clap for this voice. Help me. Okay. We have now a 911 line. <laughs> Only for this conversation. Only for what? This conversation. Please send a test. Is it on that thing? What, do you, what is that thing you people use all the time? Eh? Sapap. WhatsApp, okay. Is it on WhatsApp? Okay. If, is it on WhatsApp? Ma. Is it on WhatsApp? It's on WhatsApp. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't... I'm still growing. Maybe when I grow to your level, I will. Then we can begin the conversation on how to deal with the offense. Because offense is what? A trap. People have offended you, and you are still holding on to them. You're in trouble. And it's, that is what is pain. If you are going through... One thing I can assure you is that nobody is going to ask you to tell your specific story. But since it's a principle we've seen through scriptures, and for the sake of time, we can't even push forward. I didn't go through half my note. I'll give it to them to see if they can put it in the beacon for next Sunday, the Lord helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. So, one thing you must understand that whatever challenge you are going through, whether it's sickness, whether it's affliction, whether it's a delay, God knows. And when we suffer pain, he pains him. But we must resist the devil. Just understand that it's not your friend. It's not your mother-in-law. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. Because some people have tagged their wives, witches and wizards. And when they tell me that, I say, well, every woman is an official witch, licensed by the pastor. <laughs> so, it is a, the way you say that is not true. So, let's stop fighting what? Ourselves. When, when, when Peter approached Jesus and said, you are not going to go to the cross, who did he address? Satan. And you, the Bible says, when you resist him, he will do what? He will flee. It's good to ask him questions. It's your father. 
Lord, why this? The mistake you must never make is to run from him. Because that's a tendency. Reading the Bible at that period may become discouraging. They say, raise the prayer point. Can you imagine Anna? Every year she will go to Shiloh. The same problem every day. Until one day. And you know what happened? She was praying. The Bible says her mouth was moving. But she was not, uh, they were not hearing sound. Can you imagine if you are praying, pastor comes to tap you and say, why are you disturbing the church? What's your problem? Is that not satanic? You can get angry. And if you are not holy enough, you can, you know. <laughs> and she will get angry and become offended. And God will, will step back. That's what the enemy wants to do. That's why the, Jesus warned John. The, he said, me, don't get what? Offended. You see, when you leave this church, your people are going to offend you. When you get to people are going to offend you. Don't get what? Offended. Offense is a trap. No matter what they have done to you, release them to go. That's the first step. You release them to go. Imagine if I have breakthrough. Because that prayer brought her the breakthrough she needed in life. Abby, sister, a prayer brought her to, to breakthrough. And what happened? As she was praying to the breakthrough and saying, God of heaven, make a promise. The enemy knew. Satan understood that God has sent angels. You know that one. Take from Daniel. And he, he positioned the priest. I won't be a temptation to you in Jesus' name. I pray for myself. The priest said, no, 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 you, you, you can't do that. What was their sense? She would have done what? She would have gotten angry. And said, I don't know this Basildin priest. Useless man. That is why. And walked away. Would God have answered her? No. But she was wise. She was a wise woman. She said, no, my Lord. It is not so. I am not drunk. The prophetic word I was going to give a break to was in the mouth of that priest. If she had walked away, would she have had it? No. The priest didn't pray. He said, the Lord grant you what? Your request. And that sealed it. Imagine if she had taken offense. You are fasted and prayed and you are getting home. Somebody is making you upset. Watch it. If you don't open that door, you won't suffer. If you don't open that door, you won't suffer. The word of breakthrough, she will have fought her deliverer because she was angry. She will have fought her helper. And that will have been the end. We will not miss it in Jesus' name. That word that will bring you breakthrough. If she was at the verge of her breaking forth, can you imagine the dimension? Why will he be a priest? It's because in the heavens, answers have come. Daniel was told, from the first day you open your mouth, answers have come. But there was a resistance, an adversary that was there. The only way you can succeed over your life is if offense is there. Let us pray. Please, if you have questions, let's do it in the conversation. Let's pray. Pray if you want to stand to pray. If you want to sit to pray, do the way you want to do. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help me. We are going to resist Satan. Wherever you are, you are going through difficulties. There is a way out. Whether you are waiting on the Lord or not, or whether you are believing God for anything or not. I want you to know that some, basically, is because there is a contention. The devil is jealous of you. Jealous of grace upon your life. Jealous of the of progress you have made. Why would you want to side him? Why don't you show off and say, no, I will never, I will never cooperate with Satan. Whether in my family, in my place of work, over my children, I won't cooperate, I will not. Lord, help me not to take offense. 
Shield me everywhere and anywhere I've taken offense, I plead the blood of Jesus. Because the devil will send people to provoke out of jealousy. And the people will not even know. You think if Eli knew that that was what the devil was planning to do, he will know. Those are moments of weaknesses. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Pray for yourself. Ask for strength in the inner man. That songwriter says, Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Can you ask for that amazing grace this morning? Lord, let grace come to us in this area of need. Let grace come. The scripture says, it says, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Can you drop whatever name men have named you this morning and say, Lord, I, I drop that name. It says it will give you a new name. Begin to open your mouth and say, I shall be called by this name. I shall no longer be known by this name. Today, my name is changed. It said the name that the mouth of the Lord shall name. Ask that the Lord will name you this morning. It doesn't matter by what name men have described you. Men may have called you all manner of names by reason of the circumstances and situations of life. But this morning, you have the opportunity to be renamed by the name that shall come from the mouth of the Lord. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Let God hear you. Let the heavens hear you. Say, my name is changed. I shall no longer be called forsaken. I will no longer be desolate. I will not be in want of strength, in want of grace, in want of encouragement. But that the Lord will strengthen me by reason of this message this morning. My name is changed. It says, the Gentiles shall see my righteousness and all kings shall see the glory of the Lord upon my life. Pray for yourself. That as you step out of this auditorium, the glory of the Lord will appear upon your life. That's what men will see. That's what men will see. And you will be described as. Whatever name came with you to this assembly today, no longer shall you be called that name. Whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstances, whatever the trouble of life is, God has changed it for you. God has changed it for you. Let's pray for our chaplain. That the Lord will continue to uphold him and strengthen him in the Naman. Let's ask for an amazing grace for him. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. To continue in the path of righteousness. To continue in the way of the Lord. To continue to hear God and hear him clearly. Thank you, mighty God. All glory, all honor to you, Lord. Thank you for the way you have loved us. Say so you have loved us with an everlasting love. And again, Lord, you have displayed your love this morning. A prayer, O oh God, is that we will take hold of this love. And we will walk in the power of this love. That the enemy will not change us in any way. Amazing grace will be poured afresh upon every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace to go through. Grace to walk through. In the mighty name of Jesus. And on the other side, oh God, we shall indeed be victorious. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed.